<laughs> Anne and David, and um, they are going to do a presentation on um, Web 2.0, and they are, as, as Anne told me, this is a dry run because they're going to do a similar presentation at the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits Technology Conference this year, and um, they're open to questions along the way or afterwards? Or sure. Sure. Along yeah. the way is fine. Okay. So whatever works. Um, do you want the lights out or are we okay? Uh, I'm, this is fine, I think. Okay. Oh. Do we look better with the lights down? <laughs> <laughs> Girlfriend used to tell me that. <laughs> look better in the dark. Um, yeah, so communications 2.0. Uh, we're just going to cover a handful of the uh, significant web 2.0 uh, technologies and sites and, uh, and how you can use them to communicate in this new and exciting age. Huh. I'm so good with the technology there. <laughs> so those are the uh, those are the uh, sites we'll cover, and we can we can also, if you want to talk about other sites, we can talk about that as well. But go ahead. So what we could do for one minute is just to give a brief intro of what we really do. That we could do. Oh. Um. Yeah. David Erickson, E Strategy. I do. Um, Internet marketing, basically anything having to do with internet marketing, email marketing, search engine marketing, uh, web 2.0 marketing, whatever there is, I, I do it. So that's the short. Yes, and Tracy Information Services, I do very similar. I think we both focus a lot on search engine optimization. I think we can say that. We both work with nonprofits. Um, I work with a lot of resorts as well. You work with some retail folks? Retail folks, yep. And that's, um, I do a lot of work with Minnesota Rural Partners. That's kind of a much more inclusive solution for them, but it's just a little bit of background. My background, I um, used to be a librarian. And I, yeah, I come from, that is, it's interesting how people get in this field. A lot of people I meet in this field are technology, they're coders, basically. And uh, I sort of am self taught, came from a marketing and, uh, in communications background, so I look at it as a as a vehicle for communications rather than technology. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, what do the Web 2.0 sites have in common? Uh, they all generally have in common some aspect of social networking, where uh, users can communicate with with it with one another. Um, they have uh, tagging, which is basically applying keywords to content. They uh, allow users to share their content, and uh, they are uh, there are communities of interest in that they're self-selected. Uh, when they search for content, they're, search they're using keyword searches, and those keyword searches reveal what they're interested in, and y you can build communities around that type of thought stuff or the, um, the uh, content itself. Um, engagement, again, it uh, it's, goes back to social networking. People talk to each other, they hold conversations. It's a very uh, informal type of uh, um, environment. And, uh, and it's rather helpful. It's interesting. Uh, I, was, I was discussing this with a friend of mine. We sort of are going from the uh, argument culture where you have you know, the crossfire TV uh, opposing <laughs> arguments and they're just clashing and not agreeing on anything to this new web environment where people are being helpful. They're offering answers rather than uh, rather than conflict, and so that's sort of an interesting dynam dynamic I've noticed that has come out of this. Yeah. Okay. Well, centers of gravity. Uh, these sites have become popular because obviously they have an appeal for one reason or another, and because of the you know the mass mass of people that hang out on them, there's a critical mass. Um, so it. If you want to target a certain type of demographic group, um, these are the places to go. You want to find the centers of gravity. They're, you know, it's not just the YouTubes. It could be, you know, based on your particular needs, some specific site that is, uh, you know, doesn't have a lot of users, but they're very interested in, in um, a specific topic or um, issue. Uh, and then again, it's self-selected. They're. Uh, they are congregating at a site because they're interested in that topic or issue. They're self-selected through their own keyword searches and through the, the content that they, that they post. 
And so when you have a critical, uh, a critical mass of people at these centers of gravity, it tends to have a network effect. Um, there's a notion called the long tail. It's basically a, an, an economic uh, theory, but it also applies to, um, to blogs. There are certain blogs that are highly trafficked in, let's say, politics. There's a blog called the Daily Costs. It's a demographic blog, and there's just tons of pe Democratic blog. <laughs> There's tons of people that read it, and then there's all these other bloggers that blog for the, their group of friends, for influencers, right? But their readers may be 10 to 100 people, not a lot of people. But they all read that, if they're interested in politics, they all read that, that blog, and those, those ideas come down the long tail. So you've got the small blogs at the end of the tail, the, the highly trafficked blogs at the, at the uh, beginning of the tail. Well, the old example of that is when not everybody in the organization had email. So one person would get on the email list, print it off, put it on the literal board. You know, so it looked like you only had one subscriber from organization. Hopefully that's not the situation anymore any place. Uh, but I can remember, and I, we've both been doing this for 10 plus years, but certainly 10 years ago that was very typical. I, I love to get your email and then I tape it on the kitchen wall and all, everybody at the office reads it. You know, it's the same. It's just faster yep. and wider reaching. Yeah, and it's a very efficient way of getting a message across. If you can get get the, the the large part of the tail to talk about whatever it is you want, whatever it is your message, the network effect can take effect. The wisdom of crowds. Okay, a lot of these uh, sites sites based primarily on the tagging that they do, the keyword tagging of the content. Um, there's a notion that a critical mass of people examining something can come up with a better solution than, you know, a handful of people. It's a pretty, you know, solid, sound idea. Um, so you can often, you know, as far as tagging is concerned, these people, the, the most popular tags are the ones that are most accurate. Um, as far as research is concerned, like wikis, I know there's, you know, it's got some, Wikipedia has gotten bad press because of inaccurate information. Of course, that's, a, that's an issue. But... It ha it's a system designed to self-correct, so that ed people can anybody can edit it, anybody can uh, can correct something, and there's revisions. So you can go back and find out what you know, what pe what people did, what edits, and in the long run, you're probably going to get closer to the truth of a given subject than you are just you know a handful of people. Again, the answer culture. Um, as opposed to the argument culture. So, and David, I, here's an example that I know just half of, but the, the critical mass, there's a newspaper that was looking to do crowdsourcing. So if they were planning on, on researching a topic, researching Rock 10, researching whatever it is, they might let people know, we're looking into this topic. If you want to self-select as an expert, you contact us and we'll help, help us write this article. Let them get to the information a lot faster, but you get into that issue of people are self-selecting to provide that information to you. But there were some good examples of people getting to the getting to the root of it a little faster than one journalist would have been able to do. And journalists are gen generalists, you know, so they they uh, they don't maybe they can understand a uh, in-depth topic, but they may not have the particular expertise that a professional in that field or whatever would have. Um, so that you know that that sort of op open source journalism. Uh, type of thing can is part of that. Um, online forums, blogs, Wikipedia. Uh, again, blogs have the same effect. Uh, somebody posts a blog and they have open comments. If you get a critical mass of people, they sort of discuss the issue back and forth and uh, correct each other. And uh, if you're if you're patient enough to write, read through all those comments, you may probably arrive with a better understanding of the issue than you would otherwise. But, Your turn. My turn. <laughs> <laughs> Flickr. Uh, how many people have used Flickr? A couple. A couple. Flickr, and, and very generally, Flickr is a place where you can upload your pictures, you can modify them, you can share them. Um, people can make comments on them, and I've got a slide of it in just a second. Um, you can update the pictures, you can send the pictures straight from your camera, straight from, I think they've got a tool now, you can do it straight from your